Welcome to the Lutheran Radio Church Service. This broadcast is brought to you on this station every Sunday at this time. Thank you for listening. Good morning, and welcome to the Lutheran Radio Church Service. The music for today will be provided by the Lutheran Radio Choir, directed by Marlene Forche. Uh, the, our Radio Church Choir will be singing the following hymns from the Lutheran Hymnal during this service. Hymn number 538, hymn number 466, and hymn number 288. Our guest speaker today is the Reverend Dr. Patrick Ferry, president of Concordia University, Wisconsin. Your liturgist is Pastor Jeffrey Miller of Berea Lutheran Church in Milwaukee. When we face trouble, when we face struggles, ours is not a faith in faith, it is a faith in Jesus. Stay tuned as Pastor Ferry will focus on the theme, faith in Christ alone. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Lutheran Radio Choir will sing the hymn, Now the Shades of Night Are Gone. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them his Holy Spirit. Glory be to God on high. Glory be to the Father, Our first lesson for this, the 15th Sunday after Pentecost, is recorded for us in the 35th chapter of the prophet Isaiah. Say to those who have an anxious heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He will come and save you. 
Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a deer and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. For waters break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite your attention to the reading of the Holy Gospel, which will also serve as the text for this morning's message. The Holy Gospel is recorded in the Gospel of St. Mark, the seventh chapter. From there, Jesus arose and went away to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And he entered a house and did not want anyone to know, yet he could not be hidden. But immediately, a woman whose little daughter was possessed by an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile, a Syrophoenician by birth. And she begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. And he said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, yes, Lord, Yet even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And he said to her, For this statement you may go on your way. The demon has left your daughter. And she went home and found the child lying in bed and the demon gone. Jesus returned from the region of Tyre and went through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. And they brought to him a man who was deaf, and he had a speech impediment. And they begged him to lay his hand on him. And taking him aside from the crowd privately, he put his fingers into his ears and after spitting, touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. And Jesus charged them to tell no one but the more he charged them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done all things well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. Here ends the reading of the Holy Gospel. Let us confess our holy Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Immediately after the choir has sung the hymn, Christ, Thou Art the Sure Foundation, the Reverend Dr. Patrick Ferry, President of Concordia University, Wisconsin, will share his message on the theme, Faith in Christ Alone. Yeah. 
grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Every year I pay regular visits to my dentist and my doctor for routine checkups. The topic of our nation's health care doesn't normally come up in either place. But in both settings, the topic of my own health care is usually part of the conversation. Of course, you would expect to have an exchange about your health and your well-being with your doctor or your dentist. My doctor is a friendly guy, and I always enjoy a few minutes of banter with him. Conversations with the dentists, by contrast, are typically more one-sided than the ones that I have with the doctor. It's always a little awkward trying to answer questions when your conversation partner has implements in your mouth or floss between your teeth. And while I'm being chided for plaque buildup here or enamel erosion there, I don't try to defend my record of good brushing and flossing. Rather, I groan and grunt mostly unintelligible sounds and wait anxiously for the opportunity to rinse. I don't like to talk when my mouth is full. Our gospel reading today offers a mouthful for us to chew on, and I'm going to do my best to articulate some of the connections between our reading and our lives. Oh, you can sit back and you can relax, but I'm not going to guarantee that this isn't going to hurt. In fact, a trip to the doctor for those tests we'd rather not talk about or to the dentist for a root canal might seem like a pleasure compared to the sharp implement of God's word that pierces our thoughts, dissects our words, and surgically strikes our actions. There is no novocaine or anesthesia to dull the effect, but if Jesus can get the full attention of a deaf and mute evil spirit, I'm pretty sure that his message can reach our ears and penetrate our hearts. In our gospel, Jesus engages in a little healthcare debate of his own, and the situations are crises. In one case, you have a little girl possessed by an evil spirit, and in the other, a man who was deaf and who could hardly speak. In his first appointment, Jesus approaches the situation with the young girl in an unusual way. The physician of the soul diagnoses the problem as mainly spiritual and, and not physical, and he tests the faith of the girl's mother. Her response is remarkable. Instead of walking away when Jesus challenges her because he knows she is a Gentile and not a Jew, first let the children eat all they want, he told her, for it's not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. She persists. Yes, Lord, but even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. In St. Matthew's account of this gospel, Jesus says to her, woman, you have great faith. Her daughter was healed that very hour. This woman had great faith. Next, near the Sea of Galilee, Jesus performs another miracle when he opens the deaf man's ears and loosed his near-mute tongue. And the fellow began to speak clearly, and people were amazed. He has done all things well, they exclaimed. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. And news of these miracles accompanied Jesus. And a comparison that I would like to draw is between the persistent and faith-filled mother in our text and another pleading parent in a similar circumstance who Jesus encounters just a few chapters later in Mark's gospel. Do you remember that story? Once again, the situation is a crisis. You have a boy who is foaming at the mouth, who is gnashing his teeth. And according to the patient's father, this was actually a pre-existing condition from childhood. Bring the boy to me, Jesus said. Jesus who casts out demons. Jesus who makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. Jesus who does all things well. Jesus says, bring the boy to me. If you can do anything, the boy's father pleaded, take pity and help us. What do you mean, if I can? Jesus replied, everything is possible for him who believes. This man had weak faith. I warned you that this look into God's word today might sting a little. Thoughtful reflection can cause some pain. The girl's mother exhibits a sort of faith that may prompt Gentiles like us to wonder how our own faith measures up. Would our faith be as strong as hers in a situation like that? We might better relate to the boy's father 
who offered Jesus his honest but honestly inadequate reaction. I do believe, he said, help me to overcome my unbelief. Honestly, I wonder whether I would have been as strong and persistent as the woman who stood there and kept on believing, even when it appeared that the Lord himself might be turning his back on her in a moment of crisis. The father, on the other hand, strikes me as as some sort of ventriloquist almost. I mean, how did he get my words to come out of his mouth? (laughs) That's me. I'm that boy's father, and I suspect so are you. I am the one who faces life's difficult situations with that same mixture of belief and unbelief, of trust and doubt, of eagerness to walk on water with Jesus and fear of sinking down. I am not the one who stands there like the mother who persists, who perseveres with dogged determination. Even Jesus compares her to a dog to make a point. She had great faith. I'm the one with weak faith. I do believe. Help thou my unbelief. I realize that there are some folks, even some well-meaning folks, who would look at situations like these and who would conclude that if only they had enough faith, Jesus would overcome anything, any ailment, any problem, any difficulty. After all, didn't Jesus himself say that only a mustard seed of faith could move a mountain? The point, and it's a sharp one, is that for most of us, most of the time, our faith is weak. Ours is the unbelieving generation, and we find ourselves too often fitting right in. Now, I'm not questioning your faith. You don't need me to do that, because if you're honest, you will admit you question it sometimes yourself. Have you moved any mountains lately? What's the problem? We struggle with faith. That's our problem, and Jesus knows it. So if we're honest, honest with ourselves and honest to God, we will acknowledge that faith is a struggle for us. But I hope that you will take my professional opinion of that diagnosis and take heart in hearing me tell you that this is actually a good thing. It's a good thing that we know this about ourselves. This morning I'm going to make a statement that might also make you squirm for just a moment, but then I'll explain. So hang with me. Dear friends, we are not saved by faith alone. In fact, Jesus points out the weakness of that idea even as he exploits the weakness of our faith. But let me explain before anybody gets too nervous. We are not saved by faith alone. We are saved by faith alone in Jesus Christ alone. In other words, it's not the amount of faith that matters. Only a mustard seed of faith can move mountains, and I can't seem at times to muster even that much. But here is the key. It's not the amount of faith that matters. Rather, it is the object of our faith, the focus of our faith, the one in whom our faith is placed. That makes all the difference. I am saved by faith in Jesus Christ, not by faith in my faith. I believe. Help my unbelief. And unbelief we know well enough. Our faith is often challenged. And unlike the persistent woman whose faith did not shrink, even when tested by the Lord, our faith at times seems too small to move ourselves, much less mountains. We want to believe, we want to trust, we want to move, but in our weakness we cannot lift ourselves to a better place. So don't dodge the diagnosis. Don't put your faith in faith. Faith looks to Jesus Christ alone and rests in him unceasing. Trust in the name of the Lord Jesus and rely on him. Rely on him alone. Where is your faith being challenged right now? Maybe your trip to the doctor and the test that you took were more than merely unpleasant. Maybe you have problems. Or maybe it's not you. Maybe it's your child, like the pleading parents in Mark's gospel, or perhaps another loved one. You're worried because there are problems. Or maybe it's something you said or something that was said to you, and we get tangled in all kinds of relationship struggles. The damage has been done, and putting the pieces back together seems impossible. You don't believe that it's possible. But everything is possible for the one who believes, Jesus says. We have trouble believing that, 
But is it really so hard to believe that the one who rose from the dead can resurrect relationships that have been broken? Or is it beyond belief that the one who scatters the darkness of sin and death in the dawn of resurrection light can reach the dark, difficult corners of our lives with hope in the promise of his loving presence now and forever? I won't tell you that your sickness or your loved one's ailment will disappear if only you have enough faith. (laughs) That's the point, and the point is sharp. We don't have enough faith. We can't muster a mustard seed. But Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will never die but have everlasting life. Faith in Jesus brings the absolute guarantee and promise of perfect health and healing for us all. Not here, but hereafter and forevermore. In my regular trips to the doctor and the dentist, the national debate about national health care doesn't come up. The more immediate topic of my own health care does. And if my doctor recommends tests, I take them. And if my dentist says that if I want to keep my teeth that I have to be attentive to to brushing and flossing, well, then I better do that. However, neither of them ever promises that if I am faithful about following their prescriptions, that I will live forever. Jesus, on the other hand, does promise us with that very promise. He doesn't urge us generically to believe, to, to trust, to have faith. Rather, he bids us to trust him to believe in Him, to have faith in Him, to come to Him, all who are weak and heavy laden. He will give you rest. He will give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. joyful confidence that our Heavenly Father hears our requests and answers them according to his good and gracious will. Let us pray. O Lord, let your merciful ears be open to the prayers of your humble servants and grant that what they ask may be in accord with your gracious will. Direct us to a faith that trusts in the Lord Jesus, that trusts in his name, that relies solely on him. Gracious Lord, you've commanded your church to take the word of life to the ends of the earth. Strengthen and support all those who travel on behalf of the church's mission. Give them wisdom and courage as they tell the good news of Jesus. Bless their hearers with hearts that are receptive to your good gifts. God of all comfort, you have commanded us to love our neighbors as ourselves. Grant us compassionate hearts that we might attend to the needs of our neighbor especially those suffering effects of poverty and hunger. Open our hearts to share from our bounties. Bless the efforts of those who dedicate their lives to the care and support of the needy. Into your hands, O Lord, we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. As we enter our 88th year of broadcasting the gospel of Jesus Christ, we'd love to send you a special free gift from our ministry to your home. 
And as always, you can receive a copy of today's message. All you have to do is simply write to the Lutheran Radio Church Service, Box 501, Brookfield, Wisconsin, 53008. You can also call us at 414-462-9900 or visit our website at lrcsonline.org. On our website, you can hear past services just by clicking on the service archive button and selecting the service you're interested in. You've been listening to the Lutheran Radio Church service pre-recorded at Trinity Freistad Lutheran Church in Mequon, Wisconsin. Today's music was provided by the Lutheran Radio Choir directed by Marlene Forche. The message, Faith in Christ Alone, was given by the Reverend Dr. Patrick Ferry, president of Concordia University, Wisconsin. Your liturgist has been Pastor Jeffrey Miller of Berea Lutheran Church in Milwaukee. The Lutheran Radio Choir will now close our service by singing the final hymn, Lord, Help Us Ever to Retain. The preceding service was brought to you by the Lutheran Radio Church Service, broadcasting radio church services every Sunday morning since 1928. You may request a copy of this morning's sermon. Please pray for this important ministry. Prayerfully consider donating any amount the Lord enables you to give to this Christ-centered gospel ministry. Please mail your gift to the Lutheran Radio Church Service, Box 501, Brookfield, Wisconsin, 53008. That's the Lutheran Radio Church Service, Box 501, Brookfield, Wisconsin, 53008. Thank you for your generous support of the Lutheran Radio Church Service, and may God bless your day.